should be enough. Sargassum has been with us forever. Sea turtles and nice. fish oh, yeah. love it. Humans, not so much. Sargassum is telling us, Houston, we got a problem here. We've come way out here, 30 kilometers off the coast of Florida. Okay. We ready? All right, let's go. To meet Dr. Brian LaPointe, an algae okay. expert. Where you want me? Step there. Motoring out to find the big floating sargassum pods. To ask LaPointe why there's so much more now. The human nitrogen footprint has grown. This is causing an expansion of harmful algal blooms. And sargassum is the biggest algae bloom on our planet. This is a naturally occurring algae, but the scale of it isn't. Tens of millions of tons of the stuff. It's a sign that the ocean is out of balance. Last year, sargassum exploded to a record-breaking 24 million tons, and this year it was tracking the same, leaving ugly, smelly, and potentially harmful algae dumps from the Caribbean and Mexico right up to Florida. Environmental, economic, and human health issues uh, all can occur when you have massive amounts washing up, decomposing. LaPointe's been watching how the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt has massively grown and changed. We have seen a 35% increase on average in the nitrogen content. Where is that nitrogen coming from? Fertilizers, human waste, fossil fuel combustion coming out of the atmosphere. On a marine research vessel, his team at Florida Atlantic University collects and categorizes the algae. Can you snip all that, yeah. that old tissue off and put that in a separate baggie, OK? okay. Yeah bagging it to go back to their labs where they'll dry it and study its composition. They picked up a bit of a signal. Sargassum has been swirling around the lower U.S. since April. This is where the current exits the Gulf of Mexico. You can see all these patches of sargassum. Right. Oceanographer Dr. Peter Morton tracks where it's going and the metal elements in it. But the sargassum material that we're finding that's washing ashore has uh, significantly high concentrations of arsenic. We're paying close attention to it because uh, if the sargassum material is used in any sort of human food products, animal feed, or fertilizer, it could be present toxic concentrations of arsenic. Sargassum's been a problem on the shoreline in Miami, where tractors battle daily just to clear the beaches. Afifa Abdul Ghani worked on a project to turn all that algae into compost. We had very high levels of arsenic. So instead of using the compost product for, let's say, vegetables or something for human consumption, we recommend that it be used for any ornamental areas. She says lots more research needs to be done. Sargassum has been here longer than we have, right? So it's not something new, but because we have impacted the environment and changed the way it is, it's also, it's kind of pushing back, right? So what are you finding then? Well, looks like over 95% of what we're looking at here is seagrass. Not sargassum. Not sargassum and not seaweed. But these mounds of dying seagrass could be collateral damage from the sargassum and they present other hazards. If you have sea turtle nests, and either excessive amounts of seagrass or sargassum are blocking their paths That's to right. the sea, sea turtles are getting caught in it. Back on the ocean, recent tracking suggests the huge sargassum growth may be slowing down before it peaks in July. It's unpredictable. And it can be abundant, massive on one day, and a few days later, it's gone. But warming seas and nutrient overload ensure this phenomena is here to stay. Susan, I know you're on assignment. That is the Pacific coast behind you. But let me ask, what else is this early sargassum bloom in the Atlantic showing us? Well, some of it is laced with microplastics sticking to that algae and other marine life. And also that smell from it decomposing on the beaches. Well, that hydrogen sulfide can be toxic in large enough amounts. So scientists are watching that. But really, we're seeing a 
warming ocean in. Some of the Atlantic is as warm today as it typically is in September, and we're seeing a potential hurricane off the west coast of Africa, perhaps headed to the Caribbean this weekend. That's two months earlier than normal. All right, Susan, thank you. You're welcome.